Do you want sustainable joy? Sustainable joy is relational. Joy is the feeling when someone is happy to be with you. Today, I'll show you how to experience real joy with the one who is truly happy to be with you, Jesus. These short episodes are designed to fill you with wisdom and encouragement for the journey of your life. Welcome to your kingdom journey. In episode one, I shared the intimate cry of my heart that came as I meditated on Psalm 91. I literally didn't know how to enter the secret place. I didn't know what it was meant by he or she who dwells in the secret place. I wanted to benefit from the promises found in that amazing psalm. Eventually, I found the way in, and what I discovered, guess what? Joy was there too. So I can safely say that entering into the presence of God is the key to finding joy. But is it sustainable? Is it something you can choose to initiate rather than begging the Lord to invade your space to encounter you? Yes, you can enter His presence anytime you want. Joy is found in the presence. Do you know there is no Hebrew word for presence as in the presence of the Lord? The most common Hebrew term for presence is panim, which is also translated face, implying a close and personal encounter with the Lord. That means His presence is a face-to-face -face encounter with Him. This connection to joy makes perfect sense. Let me illustrate. When you're happy to be with someone, doesn't it usually include seeing their eyes, their smile, and the overall expression of how they feel about you? Let me ask you this. If you run into someone you haven't seen in a long time and you call their name to be greeted with a frown, how does that make you feel? It's the twinkle in someone's eye that sparks when they see you. It's the mutual enjoyment of each other that produces joy. That's why your own countenance and expression is key in your successful relationships. Learning to smile even when you don't feel like it will change the atmosphere around you and invite, and invite joy into the room. I'll talk more about this in a future episode. But back to joy. Joy is relational. It's a feeling you simply can't choose. It's a response to being with someone who's happy to see you. What you believe about how Jesus feels about you may in fact be limiting your ability to find joy. Do you believe Jesus is happy to be with you? I'm not actually asking if you know that he is, because if you've ever read the Bible, you know that. But do you believe that he is? What do I mean? Well, if you feel like you don't measure up, or if you feel unworthy of his love and acceptance for any reason, guess what that will do? It will keep you from seeking his face. And when you don't seek his face, you won't be able to find sustainable joy. It's that simple. The world's feeling of joy is usually built around things or accomplishments. And while they may bring you a degree of joyful feelings through these accomplishments, like getting this video edited and published, <laughs> these short-lived feelings of joy won't sustain you and will drive you to need more to accomplish in order to feel joy, reinforcing that cycle of doing to earn approval. Once you've put your faith and love in Jesus, there's nothing more you can do to earn his love. His love is unconditional and constant. He's always happy to be with you. For some, that's just too hard to believe. Allow me to share a few scriptures to remind you how much he loves you and how happy he is to be with you. Will you consider with me Ephesians 3 verses 16 through 21 in the New Living? It says, I pray 
that from his glorious unlimited resources he will empower you with his inner strength through his spirit then christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him your roots will grow down into god's love and keep you strong and may you have the power to understand as all god's people should how wide how long how high how deep his love is May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Or how about in Romans 8, 38 and 39? This is in the ESV English Standard Version. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Matthew 28, 20 says in the NIV, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So if he's always with you, if he's happy to be with you because nothing will separate you from his love, what's keeping you from his face? You just may not know how to see him. I'm going to tell you about that and how to do that, but first I need to tell you about your brain. I'm sure you'll agree with me that God created the whole brain, not just the logical reasoning part. Your left brain is wonderfully made and capable of intellect and reason and logic and all your verbal skills. It's the part of your brain that you use to study and memorize scripture. It highlights linear thinking. It's the part of your brain you relied on heavily to get through school. And much of your church activities use your left brain. But your right brain is also beautifully and wonderfully made. That's where your creativity and imagination and intuition is. It's where you see and dream. Guess what else is in your right brain? Feelings. Yes, that's right. If joy is a feeling when you're happy to be with someone who's happy to see you, then you're using and experiencing it in your right brain. For some strange reason, the church has made a strong effort to discourage right brain over the years. I remember being told that using my imagination is soulish and not from God, that my soul is bad. And I'm not sure how that ever crept in. But why would God declare the way he made us bad, especially when that's our joy center? If joy is a feeling that means the way to access joy is through our right brain. And in our next episode, I will teach you how to do that. But until then, will you please consider the question I already asked? What do you believe about how Jesus feels about you? What's keeping you from seeing yourself worthy to be face to face with him? And if you're willing, please share in the comments and I will try my best to respond. Thank you for listening and I'll see you again in episode three as we continue to unlock the keys to finding sustainable joy in your kingdom journey.